cause there's a reason to rejoice, you see. Everybody, come out and let's commence a singing joyfully. Everybody, look up and feel the hope that we've been waiting for. Everybody, be glad because our sorrow and fear and dread is gone. Freedom, you see, is like a heart singing joyfully. Just look about you. You owe it to yourself to check it out. Can't you feel a brand new day? Can't you feel it? It's a, it's a brand new day, darling. Can't you feel it's a nice Sunday? Can't you see? It's Victoria Sauté, darling. Hello there and welcome to the broadcast. It's lovely to see you all out there this morning. It's me, Victoria Sauté, and this is a program called Let's Learn Stuff. If you're stuck inside and you need some fun, she's the grand dame of getting it done. Let's learn stuff! With Victoria Sante. Well, hello there, everyone, and welcome once again to the glittery bunker in our big November show, all about family. That's right. Did you know, darlings, that it's Family Story Month? Look at that family there. It, it is Family Story Month, and, and coming up a little later in the month, right around Thanksgiving, it's National Family Week. So we decided to celebrate families. That's what we do, and and we're going to start our show as we always do with our word of the day. I've got a good word for you today. You're going to use it once, twice, and often. It's a word called bingle. The word of the day is bingle. It's a slang word. It's often used in my native Australia, darling. Down in, in Crinsworthy, we bingle all the time. We do. It, it, it's when you use it uh, when two things either come together or collide. They are, they, are, they are bingling, darling. So like today, I'm here and you're out there watching me. So I suppose you could say, we're having ourselves a bingle. <laughs> now you purists out there might know that a bingle might be used in certain baseball terminology. And, and actually, if, if, if you're a hairdresser, you, you might cut your, your client's hair into a bingle, which is a sort of a barb, I believe. Bingle. I, I love to bingle with you. Uh, Mummy had a bingle when she tried parking the car in the shopping market. <laughs> My mother had many bingles. She did, darling. She did. Now, um, let's let's begin this month with one of our favorite new little, little departments of the store. It's called Calendar World. That's right, Calendar World, where we take a look at some holidays that you know and some that I'm going to learn you about. Now, it, today's not just a, any Sunday morning. It's not. It's actually National Cappuccino Day. That's right. It's, it's an Italian drink. It's, it's espresso and hot milk and steamed milk foam. That's right. It is named after the uh, the Capuchin friars. There's them there in their brown robes. Brown robes. <laughs> That's right. Now, uh, you should celebrate this day by going to your little coffee shop and ordering yourselves a cappuccino. I have mine right here in my Victoria Sauté mother. <laughs> It's hot, but it's foamy and it's quite delicious. And between you and me, it's actually water in that glass. <laughs> yes, that's right. Now, tomorrow's another important holiday, so to speak. It is National Go to a Museum Day. Well, that's right, it's Go to a Museum Day. It's a day to appreciate great works of art. Not so great works of art, why not? Maybe go to an art museum, although they're mostly closed on Mondays, aren't they, darling? <laughs> you can go online, look up your favorite art museum, maybe your favorite artist, your art, artwork, or, or you could you should share on your on your social media one of your favorite artworks. I'm gonna I'm gonna share uh, some one of my favorite artists, and, and in all sincerity, uh, here is a, a work called Nighthawks. It's by an artist named Edward Hopper. As you can see, I've labeled it there so you can look them up. And I've always been attracted to this photo. It has a sort of an nostalgic feel. It has quite a lonely feel as though as though one were trapped in a glittery bunker for many months. But I do like that painting. Look him up. Edward Hopper, a wonderful, wonderful artist. I wonder who who is your favorite artist, darling? Uh, does, does anyone out there have a favorite artist? Oh, good morning there, Michael. Uh, hello, Joe. Yes, it is a brand new day here in the bunker. Hello, Suzanne. Good morning to you too. Well, I, I don't see any of you posting your favorite artists. You're all looking them up there, aren't you, darling? Do you know, I was a, I was actually an art history major at Cringeworthy University. I was. Uh, that's, what, that's where I got my style, and that's where, I, that's where I got most of my glitter. I did. 
All right, let's move on to it. Another holiday that's coming up on on the eleventh, on the the tenth, of course. It's Forget Me Not Day. That's right. It's uh, so Suzanne, I have to take your comment down. I love it there, but I'm taking it down because it's it's been up there for quite a while. <laughs> Oh, sorry, Susan. Oh, Meg McDowell. Yes, yes, darling, darling. Of course. So, forget me not day. It's 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 actually not what you think. Now, you might think forget me not days about the lovely little flowers, aren't they? So cute. They are. I love the colours. Really, I do. But it's actually a day to remember our loved ones who served in the military. It's sort of like a sort of like a, another Veterans Day that comes on the eve of Veterans Day, which of course is the eleventh. Now, also on the 11th is National Origami Day. That's right. It's, it, it is the art of folding papers. That's right. It's folding papers. And a little later on in the broadcast today, we're going to celebrate National Origami Day. So we're going to move on to uh, something that happens every year on November 13th, darling. It's not just for bad luck. It's actually Sadie Hawkins Day. Now, this is an American folk event inspired by uh, artist Al Capps. Hillbilly comic strip, Little Abner. That's what you remember, Little Abner, don't you? It went on to become a, oh, it became a movie. It became a, a well, it became a many things. Um, it did. Uh, let's, see, do I, yeah, let's, let's have a little look. Uh, let's have a little look at Sadie Hawkins Day from the movie, uh, Little Abner. Right Sadie Hawkins Day is officially begun. <laughs> That's right, Sandy Hawkins Day, uh, uh, inspired by Little Abner, is a day when uh, women ask men for a date. It's the only day of the year you can do it, girls, or you better do it. And as you saw in the little clip there, you're allowed to chase the man that you want. It's what a, what a crazy holiday, Sadie Hawkins. It's probably illegal now, but 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 we're celebrating it anyway, aren't we? I'm, I know I'm going to chase someone I am. Now, coming up on November 14th, it's a very important holiday. It's National Pickle Day. That's right, it's, it's National Pickle Day. Did you know that each year over five million pounds of pickles are consumed in this country? That's right, in this country alone, five million pickles. Let's, uh, let's, uh, let's, uh, let's, uh, let's, uh, let's look at this. How do I celebrate National Pickle Day? I I relish it, darling. I, mm, mm, mm. Oh, that was that was quite a big deal. I just, <laughs> it is, darling. All right, National Pickle Day. Out you go. There's many more holidays I want to tell you about on today's broadcast. November 15th. Everyone, this is a big day, and you should all obey this holiday. It's called National Clean Out Your Fridge Day. You know, we've been cleaning out our fridges since the year uh, 1911, when the first uh, the household version of the fridge was invented. That's right. Um, there are so many fridges out there. Let's have a look at this. Uh, there's one of the early refrigerators there, and here's a lady cleaning out her fridge. She, she, she takes for so long, she uses a chair, she does. Now, here's a lovely fridge that's just been cleaned, and that annoying little girl there is filling it with dirty apples right out of the basket. And here we have a, a, oh, a double-decker fridge there and a little astronaut toying with his, with his sister there in, in Dick and Jane fashion, I might add. And this lady in the blue dress is very proud of her nice, clean fridge she is. I love it. I love a good, clean fridge. Look at it. It takes, it takes standing and kneeling to clean out your fridge. It does. Now, no, November 16th is National Fast Food. Food Day, that's right. Uh, now, it's, it's since the 1950s, this nation, the United States, has had the largest fast food industry 
any nation in the country. What's your favourite fast food, darling? I, I, I'll admit it. I, I, I'm just, I like a good McDonald's hamburger every now and then. Well, actually, every now and, and especially with a large order of fries on the side. Now, on um, uh, national, uh, uh, on the 17th, it's National Take a Hike Day. That's right. This is uh, sponsored by the American Hiking Society, who tells us on this date, take a hike. Now, um, coming up on the 18th, out of their hike day, is National Mickey Mouse Day. That's right. He first appeared in 1928. Looks something like this. Now, it's not only National Mickey Mouse Day at random. It is actually the day he was born when we first saw that movie and we first said hello to Mickey Mouse. So happy birthday out there, Mickey Mouse. I hope all of my little Disney fans are out there watching and have a cake for Mickey on, on his birthday coming up. Now, here's an odd holiday, but a worthy one it is. On the 19th, it's World Toilet Day, which celebrates toilets and raises awareness of the 4.2 billion people out there who live without access to safe sanitation, darling, a sobering, a sobering number. On a more merry event, uh, National Eat a Cranberry Day comes up on November 23rd. And do they grow in bog sort of vines that stretch seven feet long? That's right. Uh, uh, the the cranberry is a is an antioxidant. It's it's a superfood. It's a superfood. I do love my love some cranberries. They're grown quite often, not only in Massachusetts and New Jersey and in Oregon, but the number one producer of the cranberry is uh, Wisconsin of all places. <laughs> That's right. National Cranberry Day. Don't you just want to stand in one of those bogs surrounded by cranberries up to your waist in berries? I know I do. <laughs> That's an odd thing, but I do. Now, on, on November 26th, of course, is Thanksgiving. We, we, we'll save that date for our, for our whole episode. And we round off the month on November 29th with National Square Dancing Day. It's a wonderful day where everyone out there is invited to do si -do. Oh, the cutest girl you ever saw. Now, gents to the center and back to your jeans. Now, ladies to the center and you circle the lane. You circle fold and you don't get lost till the gents step in with the right hand crossed in front of your girl. Now, the ladies turn in... Some people actually like that. They do National Square Dancing Day coming up at the end of our lovely family month. How apt. Now, since it's uh, National uh, Family Stories Month, let's hear from some of our favorite family members from my favorite book, Fun with Dick and Jane. Let's bring them out here. Where are they? Hello, Hello. Dick and Hello. Jane. Hello. Yes, now it's it's um, National Family Story Month. Do either of you have a, a favorite family story? Oh, oh yes, we have lots of stories in our family. We do, but we can't repeat any of them on this show. Uh, uh, that's not true, Jane. <laughs> uh, we have so many stories about our family told in the Fun with Dick and Jane book. Oh, please, those stories are boring. Jane said yes, yes, Jane, yes. Those are not stories made that are like sound like cartoon characters. We're not cartoon characters. Uh, no, we're puppets. That's right, we're puppets. We're not puppets. If Mother were here, she'd tell you what's what. Here I am, said Mother. Mother said, here I am. Well, look, everyone, making her first appearance on the show on Let's Learn Stuff, it's Mother. <laughs> hello, hello out there. Mother, Mother, let me ask you a question. I, I, I know your name can't be Mother. What is your first name? Oh, my name is Mother. <laughs> Just Mother. <laughs> uh, my mother's name was also Mother. I guess you could say it's a family name. <laughs> Mother, please, this is, come on, this is my show! Oh, uh, this is our show. <laughs> well, this is actually my show, darlings, it is. <laughs> so, uh, this is where everybody's at. Uh, what are we doing on here, huh? Uh, father, look, it's Father! 
<laughs> hello there, Dick, old boy. Hello, mother. Oh, hello, Jane. Father! Oh, father, dear father, may I call you daddy? You shall call me father. Oh, oh we call him father because that's his name. Oh, it's so nice to come on in closer, everyone. It's so nice to have the whole family on the show today. It is. <laughs> oh, we're not all here. Uh, Sally is missing. No. Oh, where is Sally? Oh. We don't know. She's had enough hands here for Sally. <laughs> and she's shy. Sally is very shy. Oh, mother, mother, where are oh, there you are. Mother, tell me, <laughs> do, do, do you have a favorite story to tell? Something that's happened in your life that, 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 that you always remember? Oh, many things, but uh, nothing I can say out loud on the show. That's right. I said it. <laughs> oh, oh, wait. There is one thing. I'll always remember the time you were invited to be on your show, Let's Learn Stuff. Like every family, we disagree sometimes. All the time! Uh, but but we're a family. We sure are. Together forever. Like it or not! Uh, uh, come on, everyone. Let's go home. All well, right. Thank bye. you, family, bye. for coming on bye. the show bye. today. Bye. 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 Goodbye, Dick. Bye, Jane. <laughs> oh, wasn't that lovely? I thought that would never end. I did it. How'd you love to have my family over? You know, we all sit around the table and stare into our cell phones. It's just such a lovely time, isn't it? Now, um, I have some friends out there, and they're, they're sort of like family. They are. And they run a program that helps families. It's called uh, Milford Food to Kids. And I'd now like to introduce you to two people. I want to first bring on Michelle Stanlauf. There you are. Oh, Michelle, you're on your side, but that's all right. And and from Milford Bank, Christine Rodriguez. Hello, everybody. Hello. Hi, everybody. Well, Hi, everybody. Welcome to the show. Uh, who, who'd like to start with you? Tell us a little bit about food to kids. Michelle? I'm sorry, Victoria. I'm sorry, Victoria. We couldn't hear you for a minute there. Minute there. Uh, 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 Milford Food to Kids got kids started five, started five years, years ago this ago month. month. Uh, Reverend, Reverend Ashley Grant, who is a uh, uh, member of member the First United, United Church of Christ, Christ, had come had to me and, and said, what do you think? What do you think? There, are there are children in our town that are food insecure. insecure. And I asked her what that, meant, her exactly. that meant exactly. Michelle, she told her, there, are there, are there are a lot of children. Michelle, sorry, I think, I think we're, we're, hearing you, we're hearing a reverberation. I think you're watching the show at the same time you're hearing it. So we're, everything's coming in twice. I'm sorry. Well, I don't know what to do that, to change that. That's better. You're all set. You're all set. We hear you just oh, lovely okay. now. Too. I'm sorry. Uh, I want everyone to know that Food to Kids, this is our fifth year being here. And what started was five years ago, Reverend Ashley Grant, who is my co-director with me on the program, had said to me, do you know that there are kids in Milford who are hungry and go to school hungry on Monday mornings? I said, I had no idea about that. So she said, let's start a program and let's get these kids fed. So these children go to school all week and get breakfast and lunch, but sometimes they go home on Fridays and have no food source until Monday morning when they're back in school. And that's kind of a sad thing because many of these children go to school right, ne right next to you. They might be at the very next desk. So what that's called is food insecurity because they don't know when or if or even how much food they might have when they're away from their only food source, which most times is school. So we got together and Ashley went to a couple of schools, one where her children went and another one where we had a friend who was a teacher and asked them if they did have children who suffered from in food insecurity. And of course they said yes. So we started the program in February of 2016 with 26 children. Ashley found the children. I went out and tried to get some support, um, monetary support, which is very important. We had enough money to support 26 children. And then within no time at all, we started to get people on board who were uh, just un couldn't believe that there were children in our town who suffered from food insecurity. So talking to other people in our church, in corporations, in civic organizations, and then the Milford Bank stepped in. Sue Shields, who is the president of the Milford Bank, was at a Devon Rotary meeting where we were and came to us and told us that Milford Bank would like to support our efforts. 
So on board they came, and I'm going to let Christine Rodriguez from Milford Bank, and who's also a board member of Food to Kids, speak on that a little bit. Hi, everyone. I'm Christine. So the Milford Bank runs a month-long campaign every year to try to raise as much funds as possible for Milford Food to Kids. Um, it could be as simple as people coming in to cash checks. We ask them to make a donation or, you know, would you consider donating the change from your check? Um, staff comes up with unique ideas to raise money individually. Still, this year, you know, we couldn't really make food or sell it. But, um, we had an employee who made masks and customers and coworkers bought those masks and the funds were donated to Food to Kids. Um, years past, we've had employees make soup or egg rolls, and all the money they raised from that, 100%, went to food to kids. Um, we asked business customers if they'd be willing to sponsor a child for a year, which is $280. And then they kind of challenge other business customers to sponsor children for a year. We also do a tip a teller night, which is employees of the Milford Bank will wait on people who bought tickets to come for dinner and we raise money that way. In the five years that the bank has had their month long campaign, we have raised over a hundred thousand dollars for Milford Food to Kids. Wonderful. That's wonderful. Now, uh, Christine is, is thank you, ongoing. Christine. Every year we do it. So every year we do usually September. This year we moved it to November for the campaign, but every year we do it. It's wonderful. So one, one could conceivably run over to any branch of the Milford Bank and make a donation that way. Yes, if they just simply came in and told any employee of the Milford Bank that they wanted to make a donation to Food Kids, we would happily accept it. That's wonderful. Now, there, there might be some people out there who are wondering, uh, could one actually donate food instead of money? Is that a possibility? Sometimes it's hard for us to accept food. Because, food. because of COVID-19 right now, we cannot accept food donations. Um, but in the past we have, and the food items need to be pretty specific because the items have to be something that a child can easily prepare on their own. Some of these children are in homes that have parents who might suffer from depression or substance abuse or simply a one parent household. So they go home from school by themselves and need to be able to prepare the food on their own. So the items we accept are individual items, gores and cereal bars and applesauce and fruit cups, um, Chef Boyardee, things like that. Things that are very simple. But because of COVID, we are being very cautious and we are purchasing all of the food on our own. I see. We now, um, change the way we do things. Generally, we have packs. I'm sorry. We usually we have packs and invite anyone from the uh, I think you're frozen there. Round. Oh, I think I think I think Michelle's frozen there on her screen. Surrounding area. I'm going to bring you out, and then I'm going to bring you right back in there. Is that better? No, I think Michelle is still frozen. Ah, oh, there she is. I, I I froze, and Christine has just put me on her her feed here. We see you, honey. Oh, thank you. Okay. Oh, I think I'm back. Uh, where I am. Okay. Anyway, um, so we're still going, you know, full force during COVID. We hooked up with the Milford Food Services through the city and the Board of Education. And at that time, we were servicing over a thousand children some weeks. Generally, there's about 150 to 180 children in the school system who need our help each week. But because of COVID, many families suffered from job losses and, and other problems. And so we helped by the food, um, food services supplied seven days of meals for the children and food to kids supplemented with gift cards so the family could get the items that we weren't able to give them. I see. 
That's wonderful. Now, are, there, are, are you still accepting volunteers to help you pack the bags? Is that still an ongoing event? Well, we are, but in a different form. Um, because we can only have 10 volunteers in the room at a time, you have to get in touch with us. And some of our packs are specific to people over the age of 60, because most of those people are very cautious and know each other. And so if something happened, it's easy, easy to trace. Others are corporations or sponsor um, companies, civic organizations. So again, the people are all in kind of the same demographic, same friend zone. And um, we're not taking volunteers as we did in the past with children or um, just people that we don't know for now. That, 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 that makes a lot of sense. It really does. Well, um, now, uh, so if, if we want to make a donation, we probably could do it via your, your website, I, I'm assuming? Yes, you can. You and can. that is milfordfoodtokids.org. And there is a link on there that you'll find to make a donation. So milfordfoodtokids.org, or you could you could run into your nearest Milford Bank and, and ask anyone, and they'll be happy to work with you with that. Uh, also, uh, here at Pantacino, we, we've been uh, had wonderful audiences over the past several Christmas seasons, and we've been able to send uh, about $1,000 to Milford Food to Kids every year. Now, this year, there isn't a, a, a Christmas show as such. Uh, coming up, but we still like to help out, which is why we wanted to have you on the show to talk about it. And also, if you if you use the link pantagino.com slash donate and you tell us that you want your donation moved to Food to Kids, we'll be happy to do that too. Well, Michelle and Christine, thank you so much for coming on the show. I, I wish you all the best. I, I love you and, and the Food to Kids program and all that you do for, for, for the community. And, and and I wish you the best holiday season and, and Thank happiness. You so much, Victoria. Thank you. We appreciate Pantacino so much. Thank you. Goodbye now. <laughs> I love it. I do love food to kids. It's a it's a wonderful organization. It, it it truly, it truly is Milford Food to Kids. Now, uh, since this is a family show, I wanted to tell you about another one of my favorite families. They're called the Brady Bunch. That's right. Now, from 1969 to 1974, we followed the lives of Greg and 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 Peter and Bobby and Marsha and Jan and Cindy and 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 Carol and. Uh, Mike and Alice, of course, in the center was for several over, over a hundred episodes. They were created by a gentleman named Sherwood Schwartz, who was um, hot off the success of another show called Gilligan's Island. <laughs> That's right. They were another one of my favorite families. They were. And he had an idea for a show and he was inspired by a movie. He wanted to call the TV program Mine and Yours. And it was inspired by the movie called Yours, Mine and Ours uh, with uh, Lucille Ball and Henry Fonda. Uh, and he came up with uh, a show called uh, The Brady Bunch, which was, as you know, Never has lost popularity, the Brady Bunch. And now, uh, here in, in, in 2020, uh, uh, the Brady Bunch lives on in many ways. Did you see their program on HDTV last year? I watched every episode. I wanted to be in that house. I did. And then all of a sudden, we stumbled upon something called Groovy Brady. That's right, Groovy Brady. Not only do I like Brady, I like things that are groovy. And, and the person who is responsible for groovy Brady happens to be one of Victoria's favorite fans. And you've, you've probably seen her name out there as we play the match game every week, a frequent winner. Let's bring on Emma Laplace. Emma, hello. Hi, Welcome to the program. I'm so happy to be in the glittery bunker. I'm in my groovy bunker. Oh, it, it is groovy. It is. Look at that. And so, I have um, my Victoria pin too. So I'm really representing you today. That's wonderful. So Elman, tell us, how did you get started with Groovy Brady? Like, What was your inspiration? How did it come about? I always loved the Brady Bunch. Um, I started watching when I was little. I was probably one of the only people in my first grade class who was really heavily into the Brady Bunch. Um, but my parents loved it growing up and they showed me episodes. And when I was younger, I always really liked it. And the older I got, the more I realized kind of how funny it is, oftentimes without really meaning to be. And that's one of the things I love most about it. And so I was watching it last summer and I had the captions on 
and I was just getting all these freeze frames that were so funny of the characters saying these lines that could have kind of a, a double meaning or just funny things they were saying. And I was thinking, this, this could really, this could go somewhere. So I started taking screenshots of these things that I, the characters would be saying in their little captions. And I made the Instagram account Groovy Brady. Um, and it has a little, a little following now. That's wonderful. That's, I think it's going to have an even bigger following. I really do. You're so good. Yes. So how, how do you how do you promote Groovy Brady? Do you, do you just rely on people stumbling across it or is there any? Well, I've, I've started to learn how to use hashtags a little more using the hashtags Mike Brady, Carol Brady, 70s, Groovy 70s. And uh, people seem to find their way to those. But it's it's funny how many people all across the world really like the Brady Bunch. I didn't realize that it I thought it was kind of more a, an explicitly American show, but you know, I'm sure from being Australian, um, it's very big in Australia. I don't know if it's big and cringeworthy, but um, it a lot. It is yeah, big and cringeworthy. Yes, a lot of my followers are from Australia. There are people walking around uh, the streets of Australia wearing their Groovy Brady merch. So it's kind of a. a a unifying thing, the Brady Bunch. Now, tell me, Emma, do you have a do you have a favorite character on the Brady Bunch? I do. Marsha is always my favorite character. She's just she's just perfect. She is. But I, I have a special place in my heart for all of them. I love Mike. I really do love Mike. I love his flair for the the dramatic, you know, his Shakespearean background, the actor. So you that sometimes sneaks in, and I, I love his his serious. Uh, Shakespearean take on Mike Brady. Well, you know, he's he's quite a wonderful actor. He really is. If you follow him on some of the other uh, performances he's given on screen, um, he's, he's quite a talented actor. He now, is. I'm going to make you jealous, Emma, I am, because uh, two of my favorite things, the Brady Bunch and Disney, came together one day for me. Um, in the first year that uh, Hollywood Studios, Disney Studios, whatever they call it this week, would, uh, in the first year they, they said that they would have a movie star there every day. And I happened to be there in that first year, and here came a little parade with a rickshaw, <laughs> and sitting on the rickshaw was Florence Henderson, waving at the crowds and I thought oh I can't believe it I, I was I was expecting a big movie star I don't know Jane Fonda Meryl Streep but I got Florence Henderson and I was just delighted with that it's a memory you I'll, couldn't, I'll, ask I'll, 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 couldn't ask for anything better than Flo really that's right I, I want I wanted to I wanted to push her around in that rickshaw I did but but the security guards came over and said darling no <laughs> I should have worn a more subtle wig that day. <laughs> well, one time uh, when I was on the streets of New York City with my mom, when I was little, before I watched The Brady Bunch, we saw Barry Williams, Greg Brady, in his cool guy shades, pushing a baby carriage. And I didn't know who it was, but my mom went, hey, Barry. <laughs> so that's my closest interaction with, with one of the Brady family members. But I didn't even know who he was back then. You know, you remind me, I actually um, saw a performance of a musical in at the Falmouth Summer Theatre uh, starring uh, Greg Brady. It was, um, uh, uh, oh, is this the one that's in black and white and in color? What's that musical? Who has that one? Um, it's, a, it's sort of like a mysteries and it, oh, I know Mr. Dazzle would know your I'm nothing without you. And he played the lead role. What was it called? I know City what you're talking about. Thank you. Jane just called off on the wings, the City of Angels. That's right. And I, I did see him and he was in it. And the best thing I can say about him in that show was he was in it. <laughs> Maybe he can speak with Greg. <laughs> now, um, do, how, what about an episode? Is there a favorite episode of the Brady Bunch that you, you love to watch? I have a few favorite episodes. Most of my favorites are in the fifth season. I like when the kids get a little older and go on dates to the drive-in. They start really wearing the, the groovy clothes. Yeah. I like when the kids are a little older. Um, one of my favorite episodes is called Marsha Gets Creamed. And it's when Marsha works in the ice cream parlor. And I just love the way they all say, ice cream parlor. I just love the way they say it. And I love that episode. She squirts the boy who wronged her with the whipped cream. That's one of my favorites. Um, of course, I love... 
Peter and the Wolf, which is where Peter is Phil Packer with the mustache. One of my favorites. Cincinnati Kids is the one where they go to Kings Island and they're all running around looking for Mike's blueprints that Jan lost, of course. <laughs> and um, I love also that one because you get to see Alice in her casual wear, which is something I really like. And you were talking about uh, Square Dancing Day. There is a great Square Dancing episode, which is called Ooh. Jan the Only Child. And she doesn't want to have siblings anymore, but then she doesn't get to go to the square dance with the family. <laughs> I'm going to have to look that one up. I am. You can watch it on Square Dancing Day. You know, um, when you say that when the groove that you're there, God, I always thought that the, the, the Mike, Mike, Mike uh, also sort of became groovy. And it, it, I don't know if it really fit him so much, but it was always a laugh when he'd come on the screen trying to look like, I don't know, Paul Lind, I suppose. His shirt would get a little more unbuttoned deep season. Yes, yeah, that's what I would. would. Oh, well, it's just been lovely to chat with you, Emma. Thank I, you so much. I wish you the best with Groovy Brady. Uh, um, I, 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 sometimes sometimes on the side, I, I send Emma some little clips every time I see something that I think is Groovy or Brady. So we'll, oh, continue, good. we'll continue that. And I look forward to seeing you um, in the match game, maybe a little later in the oh, show. I'll be there. And I hope everyone follows at Groovy Brady. You can find us on Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook. So. Follow Groovy Brady and also donate to uh, Food to Kids. Awesome. <laughs> now, just lovely, Emma. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks for having me, Victoria. Bye. Oh, she's just lovely, isn't she? Well, we'll return to this broadcast after this very brief commercial message. I told you it'd be brief, and I wasn't lying to you. Now, um, it's time for us to get crafty. And as I promised you earlier in the broadcast, we were going to explore the art of origami a little further, and we're going to get crafty with it. And to help me with that, we're going to bring on our best friend, Mr. Dazzle. Hello, Victoria and friends. How are you? I'm well, Mr. Dazzle. Well, what do you have there behind you today? I, I have a, a, a trove of origami butterflies, actually. They're all- My goodness, they're all, lovely. Yes, thank you. They're, um, uh, some of them are actually bats. I have a vampire bat here and on my other side, because I was doing some Halloween origami uh, last yeah. month. But now we're on to butterflies, because they are butterflies. fun. Butterflies, and, and you're going to teach me how to make a butterfly today, are you not? I am indeed. Uh, and and, and uh, do you have your, your paper with you there? Yes, Mr. Dazzle sent me this lovely, um, I don't know, it's a little square of paper. Yes, it's uh, its called Japanese washi paper. Uh, washi. Washi. W-A-S-H-I. Because it's so thin and wishy-washy? Yeah. No. Uh, no, it actually, in, in uh, Japanese, words tend to come from parts of other words. So, for example, in order to describe this paper, you have to describe the components of it. It is paper and it is made by hand by Japanese. So, wa and shi join together and become the word washi. Um, it it yeah. smells clean too. It does. No, it, it, it's certainly been pre-washed. So you're all set there. <laughs> Mr. Dessert, did you know that later today on uh, the, the origami semifinals are going to be televised? Today? Yes, today you can watch it on pay-per-view. Pay-per-view. <laughs> mm. All right, show us, show us, tell us, tell us how to make a butterfly out of this little okay. square. This is a very simple origami craft. This is one of the ones that anybody can do. So, so you have your, your piece of paper here. What you're going to do, um, the side that you want the butterfly uh, color to be, like, for example, if you want your butterfly to be this, this pink color that you have, that's the side you want to start face down, okay? Okay. I want so, my butterfly to look like that. So I'm going to sure. put that down? Yes. Usually when you do origami, it's easier to do it on a flat surface. I'm going to do it this way to, to show you, okay? So you start with the side you want facing down or away from you. And we're going to fold this into a triangle, okay? So bring your two corners together. And then what I like to do is I like to give just a little pinch at each tip there because we're going to crease this whole thing into a triangle right here. Okay? So you've made, 
It's like a you've, toast point. You've made a triangle. So now we're going to open it up. And After we're going we to open it. <laughs> and then we're going to fold it the other way into a triangle. So we'll have a nice X going across the middle of our square. And you can go ahead and crease that as well. Origami is, it's a lot of paperwork. Yeah. <laughs> so now we open that up again. We have we have an X right in the middle. Very good. So now we're going to fold the uh, um, side that we want here. You have yours right there. You're going to fold that in half like a rectangle, okay? So open up your paper again. So it's like this. And then now fold take, it in half. Yeah, then take it like it's a square and fold it in half. And you want to make sure when you're folding, you're folding this way, you want to make sure your um, picture that you have with those butterflies is on the inside. Okay? I'm, I'm doing mine different so you can see the, the creases, but yours, you want your picture to be inside. Because the art of origami is about making folds so that when you try to push the paper, it just falls into a shape for you. It's very okay. delicate. So now we open up again, and guess what we're going to do? Another rectangle, but going the other way. Make sure your picture is on the inside and fold away. You know, it's no wonder the origami store in the mall folded. <laughs> Too much work for them. Okay, so open open it up again. You should have a, a crumply <laughs> crumply mess. Uh, so you see how the the right now the top point you have is on the pink side. Yes. You're just going to press gently on that so that the point goes to the other side. I did it. <laughs> okay. Now, here's the fun part. So we have this sort of pinwheel shape, right? You're going to take any of uh, the two flat sides that are facing each other. And you're just going to um, you're going to bring them behind and toward each other, okay? Just like that. Now we have this little bow. The rest of it is just going to flatten down gently together. Just flatten those two sides. I see. That Do I is it. Do I press it? Yep, you can press it. You can crease the heck out of this one. <laughs> This is a very standard starting position for a, a lot of origami pieces. This is our, our combination of mountain and valley folds. A mountain of, sorry, the folds in origami are named, the mountain fold is when you crease something and you have a bump on top. Valley is when you crease it and have a fold concave. Mm -hmm. They're very pretty. All right, so now we have this lovely triangle that we have creased. Make sure it's still a triangle. And we're going to, yep, that's perfect. Flip it upside down. So it's an inverted pyramid. Now we're going to, you see how each side has two flaps, right? There's two yeah. flaps here and two flaps there. You're gonna take the front flap and you're going to fold it down so that this point crosses just over the tip here. So from the top, we fold down like that. And you can go ahead and crease that. See how I've done that? It doesn't go all the way to the center line. It just goes this way, okay? So now your next side flap, just this front flap, same. gonna do the same thing. So what you should have is this inverted pyramid with two little swallow tails on it. Does yours look like this so far? It does. Great, so we have one more step. This back part, which is the this big thick triangle part here, that's going to come up and around the back. So that, and you don't have to crease it too hard. It just has to sort of roll around, but just so we can see a little bit of the triangle peekabooing over the top here, okay? We should have something akin to this from the back, which is what you have, yeah, perfect. So you have this little triangle and all you're going to do is fold that triangle over the top and give it a nice hard crease. Now from here, we have our butterfly shape. I like to just take it on this middle crease that we've already made and just bring the wings to meet each other so that it has a little more depth to it. Uh, <laughs> Oops, oh, uh, your, your triangle at the top got, got, uh, got oh, um, out. there you go, there you go, right there. Spin, spin your butterfly around. There you go. <laughs> It does look like yours. 
<laughs> it does. You you just had you enjoyed the back view. That's all. I did. I, and am I all done? That's I'm it. That's the butterfly. butterfly. Oh, the the thing about this very very simple butterfly is you can. Yes, I've got one on my hair today. Um, I've actually clipped them to these strings. You can strew them about the floor. You can hang them from the ceiling. Uh, they're very simple, and whatever paper you use, they'll be gorgeous. Um, and, and where do you get this? Washy wishy paper. Uh, well, I got mine on the internet because uh, I like to stay home as much as I can right now. But uh, any craft store should have some version of it. Um, you know, you won't end up paying too much for it, but there are levels of grade. You know, if you want like a really nice paper, I think it's like an extra two dollars you know um but some of them have traditional designs like the butterfly one that you had some will just have wacky designs you can even get ones that have your favorite characters on them they make emoji paper so you know, and it was it was very easy to do it was actually kind of fun to do it and, and it was I, very relaxing i heard i I've, I've read in the newspaper that ever since uh, covid came and and everyone was indoors uh the interest in origami has been increasing Incre <laughs> increasing i'm just gonna i'm just gonna leave it at that but mr yeah, yeah. dazzle thank you for this lovely lesson I, th I think you all out there would really enjoy doing this it's lots of fun it's very creative and and it's 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 origami day coming up so we'll all we'll all take some paper and wishy-washy ourselves into a butterfly Mm -hmm. Mr. Dazzle, thank you so much for coming on today. I got those on us. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's always fun to have Mr. Dazzle on our show, and it's always fun to play the match. <laughs> It's time for the match game, everyone. Yes, it is. And this is where I give you a little clue and you have to fill in the blank and you have to guess what I might say. You could win today. You could win one of our big Victoria Sorte pins. You could win one of our little photographic pins. If, if, if you do a good job, you might win one or more. I can't wait to, to, uh, to play the game today. It's all about family. Uh, and remember to try to think of what I'm going to say, darling, what I'm going to say. So let's begin. Let's begin. Here's our first clue. <clears throat> While cleaning out the fridge, Jane finally found her lost blank. You get that? While cleaning out the fridge, Jane finally found her lost blank. I'm going to write my answer. Well, I didn't know what to write. That was a tough one. <laughs> her lost. So here we have some. Her lost brother. Her lost tooth. Her lost sister Sally. That's a good answer. Her lost dog. <laughs> her lost butterfly. I know where mine is. I can do. Her lost wig. <laughs> her lost heart. Her lost manners, I missed that one there. <laughs> These are good answers. I'm afraid no one has matched Victoria because I said she found her lost innocence. I don't know why I put that. I, I couldn't I couldn't think of the right answer. I couldn't. Joe's come in with a late entry, so well, no one won that round. So we're moving right along to uh, uh, another. Uh, uh, oh, there's Joe's. Oh, there we go. We're moving on to our second question, our second round of the match game today. Here we go. <clears throat> this year on National Take a Hike Day, Dick told Jane to blank. That's right. This year on National Take a Hike Day, Dick told Jane to blank. Oh, and there goes our music. Don't worry, it'll come soon. There's always the music. It's it's annoying as it is. It's lovely as it is. And before too long, it'll get nice and jazzy. Um, there it is. Uh, Dick told Jane to... I've got my answer. What did you say? Take a hike. <laughs> Take a hike. Well, it looks like 
having a definitive answer here to get to Stefan. Yeah, Step Lively. Uh, to head for the hills. Have a happy national check. That, that's a good answer, Emma, because he's a very kind and loving person he is. Uh, to walk. <laughs> and slowly, right, Shelly? Hey! That's, that's what the ground do. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna actually celebrate take a cake day. Uh, take a bike. Oh, take a bike, I get it. Take a hike, take a bike. Jamie, get lost! <laughs> During that hike, yes, that's that makes a lot of sense. Well, I haven't seen my answer. Wait, but there's another get moving! I'm gonna close this round because I wrote wear a mask. You know, this year, wear a mask. I thought, oh, I wouldn't mind. I don't know what, what I all right. I have another question for you. And then maybe maybe we'll maybe we'll get a match on this round. Friends, <clears throat> this is an easy one, it's a quick one. Here it is. Fa blank family. Blank family. So I'm gonna fill in my answer. Blank family. And there goes the music. Come along now. All right, I've got my answer. And here comes the music, finally. Something's wrong with the band today. But, it, but can you see the music is getting jazzier? The Brady family, the Brady family. The first family, Meg, I thought of that, I did. Happy family, isn't that something you get at a, at a, at a Chinese restaurant? Dick and Jane's family. The Groovy Brady family. So, extended family, that's a good one. The Sauté family. The Chosen family. I don't see my answer. Oh, the Pantachino family, yes. yes. Ah. I'm gonna flip over all the cards. Zach has chosen my answer. All in the family. All in the family. We have a winner, Zach. You did it. You're gonna get some swag from Victoria. And just because I'm in the mood, we're gonna play one more quick round. Here it goes. Blank together. Blank together. Music, come on. All right, quickly, everyone, quickly. Time's running out. I've got my answer. Zach says, yay, finally, finally, he did it. So we have come together, we have, uh, we're in this together, putting it together, in this together. Hi oh, here's the jazzy music. Come together, all together, get it together. Get it together. Well, we do. We do have a couple of winners. We already have a couple of winners. Uh, I wrote, come together. And, and, and Meg said that. And I believe uh, Shelly said that too. And I think I think Meg and Shelly know each other. They're probably cheating on each other's answers there. So we have some winners today. And that's just wonderful. I love it. Now, uh, uh, I, I also want to remind you all, where's my little thingy here? I also want to remind you the holidays are a coming. They sure are. And I have some lovely merchandise for you from tpublic.com. That's www.tpublic.com. Uh, you can get a mug just like mine. There's a tote bag, a T-shirt, a sticker. There's one of everything. If you can think of it, T Public has my little image on it, and they make wonderful gifts for your family. This Christmas, people will look at them and say, what's that? They will. Now, that is our show today. Our next show comes up on Tuesday, November 24th. It's a Thanksgiving special show, 6 o'clock. Uh, we're going to uh, talk about some delicious recipes and some repellent recipes. Now, if you have a question on how to do something for Thanksgiving, you just send that to me, Victoria Sauté at pantachino at gmail.com, and I will answer your cooking questions, your Thanksgiving questions on that 
interactive uh, show that's coming up once again on Tuesday, November 24th at 6 o'clock. It's just been lovely having you all today. Remember Groovy Brady. Remember Milford Food to Kids. Remember your family. Be good to each other. Wear your masks. Wash your hands. And for goodness sakes, everyone, be kind to each other. I love you guys. If you're stuck inside and you need some fun, she's the Grand Dame of Cagnet Dawn. With Victoria Sante. Yay! I'm, I'm Pickle Day. And Pickle